Hello all and thank you so much for tuning in to COVID Conversations by way of Zoom for WNCU 90.7 FM and COVID Conversations. I'm your host, Kimberly Pierce Cartwright. I'm the News and Public Affairs Director here at WNCU. And I have the good pleasure of having as my guest today, representatives from the Community Health Coalition in Durham, North Carolina, we'll be talking this evening to Dr. Darius Russell, the Interim Director of Community Health Coalition. And we're also gonna to talk to Carmelita Spicer. She's the Marketing and Administrative Support Executive. Victoria Ravel is also with us this evening and she is in charge of operations and public health. Did I get all that correct? It was a mouthful, everybody. Yes. I did? Okay, very good. Welcome, everybody. Well, thank you. Thank, you. thank you for having us. Oh, you're very, very welcome. And um, I want to talk about this just so such exciting um, information about this organization that I just learned about, Community Health Coalition. Would somebody take the lead and talk about um, what the Community Health Coalition is for me? Who's going to take that one? All right, so I can I can take that one. I, very good. Uh, even though I've only been with Community Health Coalition for a couple months, uh, I am the interim director. And so our, our mission is to provide health equity and eliminate racial health disparities in the Durham area as well as surrounding areas. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization and we work to partner with other organizations in Durham and surrounding Durham to be able to help people out uh, when it comes to getting health education, being able to understand um, the best ways to be able to help themselves uh, and to know uh, where to go to get the different um, modes of, of help. I'm very interested to know who your partners are. It's a coalition. Who else is on board with you? So we have a, a whole host of um, partners that we uh, have that we deal with. Uh, I can just name a few for you. Um, some of the big uh, partners that we have, and please, you know, um, Victoria or Carmelita, let me know if I, I miss some one of our big players. But we have Duke. Of course, we have um, NCCU. We have Durham County um, Public Health. We also have uh, the Durham ABC Center, um, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Durham Academy of Medicine, Dentistry, and Pharmacy. We have CARE uh, Incorporated. Uh, we also have senior pharmacists and then the Old North State um, Medical Society. So, so, so those are some of the big ones uh, that we've dealt with uh, more recently and uh, have dealt with in the past. Um, I don't know if there's any that I forgot, uh, but those are probably some of the biggest partners um, that we deal with. Okay, Ms. Spicer, could you, could you talk to me about um, the funding for the organization, is that within your purview? Well, I can tell you how we've existed for the last maybe 20 some years. Very good. Um, with our partners, with donors, uh, with grants, uh, through um, the government, through private industry, through pharmaceutical companies, um, and just a host of community people who give out of their pockets to keep us existing. Can you give me um, maybe an overview of the community of people that you serve? Sure. It's our mission to reach Durham and the surrounding communities. We are primarily, though, geared toward reaching the African-American community. More recently, though, we've expanded and we're looking at the um, um, the Latinx mark, uh, communities. Uh, we deal a lot with churches. That's really our base and that was our focus point many, many years ago. Um, one of the co-founders uh, who is no longer with us, who made his transition, uh, thought to reach out to the churches. And he started by asking the churches and the ministers just preach help from the pulpit every fourth Sunday. And from that grew a newsletter called The Health Tip that we have been disseminating, distributing well over 20 years. And it's geared primarily, it started out to the churches and asking them to talk from the newsletter 
every fourth Sunday. And the reason I understand they chose the fourth Sunday, you know, our church is uses fourth Sunday when uh, the minister kind of takes a rest and doesn't really preach as hard and it's more, um, you know, community based and doing uh, cleanup. So um, that was the Sunday that they chose to talk help from the pulpit. Um, so to, I guess to answer your question, um, we reach the community within Durham and surrounding areas, primarily African Americans, and we try to reach those less fortunate or those with the greatest need. Um, and we have extended our efforts to whoever needs our services, but our focal point primarily is the African American market. Okay, um, African Americans and Latinx communities are are being the hardest hit with COVID-19. And what's the agency doing to spread the word about the virus to minority communities? What kind of programs do you have in place? Well, we've done a lot. Um, and I would say that we started pretty much the latter part of March. And that was about the same time that the COVID-19 became very prevalent within the community. Uh, we partnered with a number of people. Um, I can share a few. Uh, the Palace International, the In Hunger Durham, Southern Harvest, and uh, Durham Soup. And with these uh, companies, and they're primarily food companies, uh, we delivered free hot meals to over 2,000 communities. Um, primarily, we reached out, uh, we gave hot lunches to Lincoln Community. Uh, center and those are to our essential workers just to say thank you for the job that they were doing. Uh, we delivered meals to McDougal Terrace. That's one of our Durham housing complexes. Uh, we delivered hot meals to the senior housing areas, um, primarily Morning Glory, Osiri Mills, and Maureen Road. Uh, we delivered hot meals through the churches, um, to name a few, Refiner's Fire, Cow's Temple, um, Victoria New Bethel. Victoria Praise. Oh, uh, yes. And um, in June, now this is what we were doing pretty much through March. And then in June, we partnered with um, Sprouts Farmers Market to distribute box vegetables. And we also partnered with NC Medicis to deliver uh, food, and we delivered that with the uh, Victoria Praise Fellowship Church and that community surrounding that church. Um, so I would say pretty much March through June, we did a lot in delivering food. We also delivered uh, face coverings, masks, uh, and we delivered produce box uh, foods, and educational informational material. Now we delivered the informational material to people as much as we could. You know, there wasn't a lot of contact, so we leave the information and hope that they would pick it up. Uh, but a lot of our materials uh, surrounding how to take care of yourself and prevent the spread of COVID-19 has been disseminated through social media, through our constant contact, which is a marketing, um, internet service and through our then newsletter, the health tip uh, in March, April, and May, we talked a lot about COVID-19. Um, and then in May and June, we partnered with the farmers, at, um, let me see, Sprouts Farmers Market to distribute box uh, luncheons and foods to our seniors, Morning Glory, Maury Road, and Cow's Temple. So pretty much starting in March, throughout March, April, May, and June, we've been reaching out to the community as best we could with care, love, and more importantly, information that will help them survive uh, COVID-19. And then the last part of June, we've been excited about actually uh, partnering with the Durham Academy of Medicine, Dentistry, and Pharmacy, and uh, Victoria can tell us much more about what we did in that area. But those were some of our um, 
outreach um, programs and initiatives that we have been doing since March. Yeah, I'm sure that it's very much appreciated. And I want Ms. Ravel to, to jump in and talk about um, specifically um, the drive that you had to, to make sure that people had um, COVID-19 tests available. And so that's gone by, but um, I saw it on the local news. So you guys are really making a tremendous impact in the community. So if you don't mind sharing Ms. Ravel with us. Thank you so much, Kimberly. And yes, this particular COVID-19 testing event that Carmelita was referring to was implemented by the Durham Academy of Medicine, Dentistry, and Pharmacy, along with the Community Health Coalition and in partnership with the Old North State Medical Society. It was held on Saturday, July 25th at St. Joseph's AME Church, which is of course right here in Durham. The event provided an opportunity for people to both walk up and or drive up and to be tested with no appointment necessary. So Kimberly, originally we aspired to test 150 people, but thanks to good planning and the resounding commitment of our communities, we actually tested around 300 people. As mentioned, the majority of these were Black or Latinx individuals, and they can expect to receive their results back in three to five business days from the date of testing. But you can imagine, Kimberly, as a public health program manager and operations manager, it did my heart good to see that we have planned appropriately and we were actually able to test around 300 people. And I guess, Kimberly, at the end of the day, we can really think about what the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention tells us regarding the social determinants of health, which are the conditions and the places where people live, learn, work, and play. And we know that they affect and really impact a wide range of risk and health outcomes. And all of these conditions, really, we can see them at work in our Durham community. So I think that this particular testing event that we had, we had a really, really dynamic opportunity to consider those social determinants of health and to plan accordingly. And Kimberly, I'll give you one example of that. We had our testing event originally planned to start at 9 a.m. However, people arrived in their cars at 5 a.m. In addition to that, Kimberly, we noticed that we had a plethora of people to come, not just one to a car, but two or three or four to a car. So that told us many things. The first of which I would say is that we got the word out, Kimberly, through our trusted partners, through our gatekeepers, and all of those in the community who we knew would be able to reach the very people that we desired to serve. The second part is that we ensured that no pre-registration was necessary. So that helped us to eliminate that barrier when it comes to people having internet or the internet not working for folks within our community. The third is that the event was absolutely free, Kimberly. So no one had to worry about paying to have this particular test done. So we really did our best to ensure that we were considering the social determinants of health and we were making it as easy as possible for people to be able to have access to this particular testing event. And we did, we had a plethora of great partners who played a vital role in making this a huge success. Um, the first of which of course would definitely be uh, St. Joseph's AME Church, the pastor, Dr. Coleman, Mr. Bailey, all of which did a phenomenal job in helping us to make this a success. In addition, Lincoln Community Health Center, our students from Duke and UNC all participated. So we are extremely grateful Kimberly, and we acknowledge that with them, we were able to pull this off in a way that we could be proud of and in a way that our community could be proud of as well. Very good. Excellent. And um, Dr. Russell, I want you to talk about um, other services that you provide. Not only are you involved in getting information out about COVID and testing for COVID, but there are a lot of other maladies that you're concerned about as well and disparities and how... Um, people of, of um, low means are, are served in the medical community. Right, um, and thank you so much, Kimberly. Um, 
Yeah, so I know that um, Ms. Spicer alluded to a few of those earlier in just talking about uh, getting uh, fresh produce uh, to some of the communities that uh, have um, lower income and, and being not having as much of an access uh, to having fresh produce. So that's one thing that we try to do and help to get people uh, to be able to um, to have food that um, that's a lot easier for their health and uh, a lot better for their health, excuse me, and uh, something that will help them in, in the long run, as well as just even being able to have a hot meal. Uh, and that's another thing that we have helped as well um, through, through COVID, but just in general to be able to help people. But uh, something over that that we do as well is uh, we go into the different places like Hosier Mill and uh, some of the other places to be able to do health education, where we do uh, talks on whether it be diabetes or whether it be hypertension or cardiovascular health, um, many different aspects of being able to know how to take care of themselves. And we do things like um, blood pressure checks. Uh, we had uh, we have a a nurse who has worked really closely with us for many, many years, and she has some other nurses that uh, work with her, and, and they go out into these communities, and they've given out um, glucometers to be able to help and teach people how to test their blood sugar. We have a, a pharmacist who's volunteered um, many times to be able to help with telehealth, to be able to call people up and follow up to make sure that you know, how their, their blood, pressure, blood pressure is going. Uh, we talked earlier, Ms. Spicer talked about um, Medicist and making sure that people are getting medication who might not have access or the, the means to be able to pay for medications uh, themselves. So there are a lot of different things and I'm sure I'm missing a lot of other things that we have done and that we continue to do. Um, but we, we're hoping to, to be able to continue growing. And I feel like, things are really starting to, to happen in, in a greater way where we're partnering a little more to be able to do uh, other activities to, to get not just, like you said, the health education to people, but being able to help them really in their health and help them to take an added interest in their health and educating them the best way that we can. This is so exciting. Thank you guys for coming in to talk to us about Community Health Coalition today. Well, thank, thank you for you. Being so exciting. My guests today, Dr. Darius Russell, Victoria Ravel, and Carmelita Spicer. We appreciate you. And audience, we appreciate you for tuning in as well. I'm Kimberly Pierce Cartwright. Until next time. Thanks.